of Mad Dog, and we're playing Kerba Space Program. And before we go actually on in the game, I thought that it, because I added Interstellar, I thought it would be best if anyone wants a tutorial on Bean Powerwall, which is, as I've already said, it's really complicated. I'm going to, uh, this is a separate, um, entirely different um, uh, playthrough here. It's just an example playthrough here. I'm going to show you uh, a little bit about beam power. Okay, so the first beam power you will encounter is high power electronics. Right here, it costs 300. It will enable you to unlock your actual thermal electric generator, which will means your reactors will now actually be able to generate some energy. Before this, they can't uh, at all, from what I've seen. Okay, and you also will receive a thermal receiver, which means you are able to actually in, in line. This is it. I mean, for your, this is your first receiver for thermal wise. Um, a thermal receiver can receive multiple bandwidths uh, at a time. I mean, you can receive all all bandwidth uh, from one to twelve bandwidth and, uh, and I know that doesn't make any sense to you but basically it can receive a lot of different bandwidths so you don't actually have to worry about changing its bandwidth however if you use this to receive power you have to have it coupled with one of these all right just so you know okay now this is their first transceiver which is your means it can receive as well as transmit and it um, so you're gonna this is basically for use within atmosphere um, as you see here, it will transmit in the microwave, and it only begins at 60% efficiency. So it's it's not you know really messing with it right there. It can receive at 90% and a D wave, but the D wave also means there's oh that's wow well, wow it can actually receive 90% on multiple. Okay, so actually it can receive it pretty good. Okay, efficiency and transmitting and receiving i guess that's good all right yeah okay 90 percent. that's actually better than i thought it could anyway um this is the part that you really have to look at though right here antenna rating um as you see it's only 50 uh, 50 m that's barely that's not even quite orbit if uh, my calculations are right now vls DNS is an upgrade that's, um, no, actually that's in this line. It's uh, LNS DNS upgrade is in here somewhere in these lines. But so it, it, it gets better as it goes on. But at default size, this thing can't even reach into orbit. Uh, so you're not going to be able to use it to send a, a ship into orbit adds default size. You can increase its size, but I think you have to increase its size by almost twice as much to be able to send the, the right proper distance. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, well here, also you will need radiators. To, be, to get any power at all, you have to have the first level of radiators. And uh, the, the f more you go up in radiators, the, the more efficient they get. Uh, is you know, I'm showing you there. They they have these little. The four thousand has makes it all dramatically more efficient. Okay. <coughs> so we'll go ahead and get the first here because this I'm going to do make this a complete tutorial on wavelengths and receivers and uh, whatnot. This is not actually a part of my playthrough, but there is a lot of always confusion about these. All right. So I'm going to make it really easy to understand as much as I possibly can. Uh, if it decides to load. Ah, oh, seriously? <coughs> uh, all right, well, what can I say? Not much I can really say without showing you. All right, yes. Yeah, yeah, I got it. As I said, this is not more part of my normal playthrough. All right, the game has decided to be really laggy. I don't know why. Uh, 
Here we are. We're going to go ahead and grab just a, a regular old Probodyne. Alright. Uh, we're going to need a battery. Because, uh, electrical. Just any old size here. Alright. Now, <coughs> a reactor is what you need a reactor. And you need a thermal generator. Okay. Now, different reactors, later on as you go on in the game, this one says thermal power 2000. So it means it generates 2000 power. Okay. Waste heat. Okay. No, wait. Thermal power. That's how much it has in itself. Okay, you know, here it'll tell you where is it at for generating power. Thermal power, 1.3 uh, gigawatts. That's not going to be exactly actually what it's going to put out because at my current, I'm using um, in uh, near future, it will probably only, it's, it's cut down by 20 times that, so it might only put out uh, not even quite a megawatt at this size. All right. <coughs> And in the near future messes everything up. I wish they wouldn't have actually tried to integrate it. I, it it, it kind of messes things up. I understand why um, uh, the, the the author did, but it, yeah, okay. So this has to be connected to this. It has to be at least the same size. If this gets bigger, then this has to get bigger. It get Making it bigger than this doesn't help, all right? So, but you also now need to see use your uh, where we are our thermal power all right so you going to make here I will I will use these I like these and we'll flip around Why yeah, I'm a lifter. Come on. Flip around the way I want you to flip around. Stupid thing. What the heck is that? Okay, there. Uh, whatever. That's not quite right. But okay. That's way more than we need. We're gonna scale them down some. This is not at all the right direction I wanted. What the heck is some of that? No, it's still not flipping around. I want it <laughs> so much for being good at telling you what I'm doing here. I am so sorry. Why the heck am I having such a hard time getting this to flip around the way I want it to go? Now just flip upside down without flipping back inside yourself. That's going to be impossible. There we go. Ah, that's because of this. No? There we go. Finally. Yes, that was it. All right. Still too big. Don't need it that big. Now too small. Dramatic difference. All right. There we go. <coughs> now, I now have a working uh, nuclear power setup. I'm going to want more battery power because battery seems to uh, just kind of exhaust itself. All right. So this is a n n working battery uh, nuclear setup. Now to transmit it, I need to have a transmitter. Right now I only have one transmitter unlocked. That is this one. Oh, what's this? Rack microwave receiver. Thermal receiver. Okay, um, that's not supposed to be unlocked for a long time as far as I know. I don't know why that's unlocked. Okay. <coughs> uh, so this thing here, these are the bands it can transmit and receive in. Um, Oh, this is actually a trans receiver. It looks like it only can transmit. Can it receive too? All right. Yeah. I'm okay. So, um, <coughs> and then we have water absorption, atmosphere absorption, wavelength, wavelength in meters, um, and uh, atmosphere and water 
and beam per power efficiency. Okay, as you change these wavelengths, that will all change. See this now wavelength in meters, um, wavelength in SI meters. I have no idea what these actually mean. Um, they well, I kind of do, but uh, the exact scientific term, they will determine how far it goes added on uh, how the integrity of them at, at difference. Uh, they, it will always go uh, the distance, but it's how much power, per percentage of the power is actually received when it goes that far. All right, so the first starting waves actually don't go all that far that well um, but they have really good atmosphere penetration which is what you're going to need if you're going to do use this all right so uh, and then the added distance right here 50 megawatt uh, 50 m but you're going to get to make one into atmosphere you would actually need um, maximum electrical thermal, which means it wouldn't be able to actually transmit uh, a one gig, a one, one, a one G. Well, actually it would, that's nine G there, because it's that, okay. But we're gonna go ahead and scale that one more time. So now 200 megawatts, that would actually get me in space with a K, uh, I wanna see here, atmospheric force and, all right, yes. That would actually get me in space but this thing's not going to generate that much power to begin with. But we'll go ahead and... <coughs> oh. I cannot... All right, I have to... All right, save and continue. I have to upgrade my, my outside. <laughs> no. Upgrade. Upgrade. One sec, I've got to stop my cat from getting in stuff. No, dude, no. Ah. Sorry about that. Uh, well, we're going to need to upgrade this. All right. We're also going to go into unlock uh, the Attila Dry. Uh, it takes a while for this to load. <clears throat> so, where is the Attila Drive unlocked? I forget where it's unlocked at. Because I think it's your first. Wait, is it not available to way later? Well, actually, beam power is not actually any use to you at the beginning, at this at lower levels, is it? At all. Uh, okay, yeah, here it is. That's, wow, okay. So, you've got to be a decent amount, ahead, a decent amount, way higher ahead in science before you even think about it really because this is the from my experience this is the only really usable one that's anything pat uh, it next usable one isn't to actually I don't know if I've ever really found one that's actually much better for in atmosphere flight I don't think any of them are any good in the atmosphere flight after the Attila drive so Attila drive actually means it's pretty good best one you get all around but it gets better too it gets more efficient as you go up in the trees uh, alright uh, okay so um, I instead of showing you which I did in, in one my <coughs> last one uh, the, the examples I'm going to just go ahead and explain each one to it. All right, so this one here is able to receive mostly microwave. It is an inline one. It is able to receive within a pretty good area. Uh, actually, I'll just go ahead and research it. 
from my experience what you're going to want to start with is these right here this one right here your deployable transmitter array it is your all-around uh, default one for transmitting for a decent amount of time okay and the easiest one to receive with from my experience is the radio fate radio array um, but this one's I've never really had it seems like this would work but I've never really had a lot of good luck with it but we're gonna go ahead and try that one make sure it's on the right band okay now default wise once you put them out there you cannot change them without bringing them back in uh, the the wavelength which can be quite catastrophic there is a mod called switch all that lets you switch them in flight which I absolutely recommend um, but it's not in date or updated or even on the net from what I was able to find I had it from old mode one and I updated it myself I will uh, I'll go ahead and up I'll put it up there for you to have it will uh, kind of conflict with the default one and in this menu you will end up having a double of each of the uh, receivers and uh, unless you actually write over the warp drive which I so you can do with it but you know um, so I'll go ahead and get these all now and then I'll also expect uh, explain relays as well wait that didn't have anything in it huh oh that was the that's buggy Oh, okay. Yeah, that's my fault. Okay, that's what, what the switch. That was a when I was changing, uh, trying to update switch all. All right, but <clears throat> uh, we just go through the basics. Okay, but later on you get lasers. Uh, laser tech is it here? Nope, it's farther. Up. Oh no, here is your first. Nope. No. Where's your first laser? Oh, uh, it, it, yeah, I accidentally removed it. My bad. Uh, okay, I'll have to. All right. Uh, lasers, okay. Yeah. Basically, and this is just a basic. You can figure them out unto yourself. So I am going to go ahead and. Because once you understand the basics, you should be able to go ahead and actually get figure out the rest. Uh, this is the default one here. Dang, game's slow, and this is a brand new, I don't know, whatever. We're going to scale it up just a little bit, so it actually produces a little bit more power. Whoops. Whoops, hitting the wrong one. Scale. We also have to scale these up with it. All right, make sure we have the right amount of power outage. Mm. I don't need it that big. we go now communicator all right there's the beam power okay so yeah I'll go ahead and explain beam power for beam power you have to have a beam generator unless you until you get higher all right right here this thing here that will enable you to generate the beam and then you have to have a beam transmitter your beam power laser. This laser is turret is high powered beam 
power transmitter. An integrated, oh, with an integrated efficient dildo laser array generator. Oh, okay. Well, that one has a, uh, that one has an integrated. I didn't know this one had an integrated. Huh. I didn't know it had an integrated. Long infrared, is, I found, is the best for right here. And then it increases its size, increases its um, the range. 556 G, that's pretty good. Uh, that'll, that'll reach into orbit and pretty much all around to the moon um, it, with the long infrared. Uh, we'll go ahead and launch this. Can merge beams. I don't know anything that can actually merge beams. I've never seen anything that actually lets you merge beams. I'm just trying to make sure I got everything right here. transmitter and we are putting three megawatts into beam power um, so that's not that good but it's not actually that bad either um, with the near oh, I think they'd be generating no nope, three megawatts okay so it's only not okay so this thing by itself generates uh, reactor window, the animation reactor window, it generates uh, 9 megawatts, but this thing at this point is only 50% efficient. Well, a little bit better, 50, about 60% efficient. And, and this is only 90% efficient. No, it's only 50%, 55% of it is efficient with the beam power efficiency. Uh, your beam there so it's 55 percent efficiency so that's why we're only getting two megawatts dang that kind of sucks anyway and uh, so go back to space center this so I can actually use them I have no idea why it's taking so long to load. Alright. We will start with. Uh, actually, no, we don't need that. We're just going to start with this. No, not that. How'd that happen? I hit that. Okay. Um, all right. We're going to use, first off, we're going to start with a, uh, with one of the ones you have default wise, and I'll show you how to use that. Um, where is it? Here it is. That's not it. Receivers, receivers. There it is. Okay, this one. This is your default receiver. And um, long infrared. Okay, we're gonna. It's max receive power. 
is beam efficiency. It's only 75%. So even if it fully received all that power, it at uh, 75%, it'll only be receiving one megawatt. Uh, make sure we're actually, this is your receiver up here, actually. So long infrared. Um, we're going to go ahead and scale it down to size here because we're only going to be receiving one megawatt anyway. Um, and we're going to go ahead and scale this a little. I'm going to use the Attila rocket engine. Where is the Attila engine? Where is it at? Right here it is. All right. And it is currently set to the next propellant. Helium, no. Next propellant, neon, no, no, no. Monopellant, hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen. I don't know why I just wouldn't use this one. Oh, it's monopellet. Oops, that was my bad. That's what's wrong with it. Oh, I can I can use monopellet. Yeah, that's a better thrust to weight ratio. So anyway, no. Oops, that's not it. Monopellet. There we go. Oh wow. Whoa, it has a really high ISP for monopellant. That can't be right. Hmm. No, that's not right. I didn't know ISP. Is it really the ISP on that thing for monopellant that high? Okay, so uh, you know by now what ISP is. But if you don't know what ISP means, it basically means... More info. Come on, more info. Middle mouse button. Right mouse button. Right. No. More. It's not giving more info here. Mm -hmm. Right and middle mouse button? Why isn't it giving me more info there? There we go middle mouse button to pin. There we go. Um, efficiency, 67%. Uh, Liquid nitrogen, 30. Monopellant. Huh? It says it has less efficiency. That's weird. Okay, we're going to give it to ground wheels. Just to to scale it up so it don't bump its head. And oh, no, that's a big Oops. Activate receiver. All right. Launch. Uh, as you see, I'm receiving almost two megawatts. Um, it's that's more than I thought I would receive, so that's how that works. I am projecting from that over there to here. Doesn't need perfect line of sight, obviously, and then it transports into power.
with amazing results. Uh, pretty good thrust to weight ratio. Hmm. Or we'll go ahead and put some wings on it. Okay. Uh, we have a lift off. <laughs> So yeah, that's basically how the um, the whole system works. Uh, so then we need to talk about relay. Um, that's basically putting a receiver in a position where it can receive. Now, only problem when you relay something is you the percentage. Some of these things can only like uh, a receiver can receive only like at 90 or 75 different frequencies, 75 percentage. You want to use the receiver uh, if you're going to relay a specific one. You're going to try and plan to use one that is let me see my my lift off uh, my weight. Lift there, that's not bad. But we're going to need some control surfaces. Uh, do I have any swept tail? I have winglets. These things can turn. It's not going to be very controllable, but it'll work. At least it should. Watch. Lift off, lift off. No, I don't have enough control surfaces. Uh, and I ran out of fuel. I didn't think it was anywhere near as efficient as the saying was. Uh, I knew the, 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 the VN is calculated, but you get the idea. It's just not the ideal. So I hope that helps you understand it a bit more. Um, the whole wavelength, the whole wavelength and receiver and transmitter. I uh, hope that helps you understand it. So that's all. Uh, see you later, Lord Mad Dog. Signing off.